Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to review something that people have been asking about for a while. In a few of my videos I spend a couple of minutes explaining the methodology of how I move about the trace file and there was a lot of positive feedback on that so I had a few people just literally ask me could you just run through a few more examples of how you zero in on a device, a conversation and all that sort of thing. So here we go. So I've got a trace file here at the bottom. If you take a look here, it says uh, packets 14,019, which is uh, not a big, not a small, kind of a medium-sized trace file. And this is um, the main the main thing you have to do when you look at a trace file is find out why you're doing it. What's the purpose? What's the target? What's the goal? In this case, in all of this mess, there's an ATA literally booting up. It's one of my infamous boot up baselines. So I want to find the ATA. So there's several ways of doing that, right? Um, the easiest thing to do first is literally prepare your screen properly. If you don't have your screen set up the right way, it gets a lot more difficult. So I've got the typical three pane display. This is what you normally see, actually. This is what you normally see. So what I would strongly encourage you to do is when you want to zero in on something, kind of start with a nice clean slate, unless you know exactly why you're doing something. So here, let me just get into this. So at the top here, we have our colorize button. We'll take that off just to make it easier on my brain. For the people over the age of 30, <laughs> like me, you might want to make sure you have a good font. Nothing too small, nothing scripty or gothic-y, just something plain and simple. It'll be easier on your eyes. And then the other thing I would want to do is get rid of these two panes here. Now, you could literally just drag them down if you want, or you just go to view, packet details, click, view, packet bytes, click, that sort of thing. Now I've got a nice clean slate. So from here I want to try to find those packets. Now it's an ATA so it's going to use certain protocols that I know. Um, it's going to obviously use uh, probably DHCP, probably SIP, possibly NTP, those sorts of things. So I want to find something that meets those requirements, right? So what you could do is a display filter and just start filtering things through. You, you could do that, but I prefer to do a find. So edit, find packet, and literally, it's a display filter syntax. I can literally type um, SIP, right? Enter, and, and there's a SIP packet right there. Now, I don't know for sure if that's the one, but, you know, we're starting somewhere. Um, and and this, is, this is kind of just a starting point. Uh, you can also just come up here and search for uh, DHCP, which is actually boot P is the proper syntax, and you could go look for something with boot P. Uh, and what you want to look for boot P is the classic four-step process where you see a discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. For example, here I see discover, offer, discover, offer, discover, request. These are bits of other conversations. I don't see a full conversation per se. Um, then there's also other things we can look for. For example, some ATAs use um, some discovery protocols, LLDP sort of thing. Uh, there's one right there. They might use CDP. It might use a proprietary one. That actually says Cisco ATA. That's also a good tip off. So you, you just basically start poking around until you find something that looks familiar to you. Uh, in this case, let's just um, start here. Let's just pick this LDP because that says it's an ATA. It may or may not be. Let's find out what the case is. And you can see it says Cisco B73D2A. And that's obviously the MAC address. So let's do a quick filter, statistics, endpoints. And under Ethernet here, you'll see the raw MAC addresses. Now I'm going to hit name resolution, and that shows you Cisco. And so if I sort by address name now, let me do this again you'll see all the Cisco stuff uh, group up together. Um, that's Cisco LI, that's slightly different. That's Cisco LI, that's slightly different. Uh, move around, move around, there you go. So we have Cisco B73D2A, 2A, and that one's 5A. I don't know how good your screen is, but this is the one we want. So right click, apply as filter, and select it. There's a million ways of doing this. I'm just showing you one possible way, and, and I never do it the same way twice. It depends on the trace file. So now we can see all these LDP packets, which are quite common when, when ATAs or phones boot up. And then there's my DHCP. Discover, offer, discover, offer, discover, request. So there was no real offer, I'm sorry, there was no real um, acknowledgement in this trace file yet. It may be further down or maybe it just never happened and that's that's fine too. 
we see our gratuitous ARP, making sure the, the ATA is making sure its IP is unique. There's no duplicate IPs out there three times. Uh, some devices do it three, some devices will do it up to five or six, right? Microsoft typically does it three as well. And now we can see this is the actual ATA, right? Uh, and just getting a little bit into the baseline, we see it send out a DNS request looking for an NTP server, comes back with an IP, then sure enough, we see our NTP client server response. We see a whole bunch of UDP packets come flying out of this thing. You can always look into it a little carefully if you want later on. We have length of 12, so there's 12 bytes of data in there. Then we see the SIP, the registration process. And in this case, it's using HTTP as its provisioning, right? So that's good to know as well. Uh, so on and so on and so on. So hopefully that helps you getting started when you have a large trace file and you have to zero in on something. There you go. Have a good day. Bye for now. Thank you.